All right. Um, thanks, everyone, for staying for one of the final sessions. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think this is the last, but we're getting close. It's getting close to the evening. Um, and I would love to talk to you uh, about something that we're quite passionate about, which is uh, the, the level of breakage in the industry. And a couple of people have mentioned it already today. Uh, and and from, from the data we are observing from our platforms, uh, the, the problem is kind of just so large. We, we believe that we have to do something about this as an industry. So what you're looking at is a graph that is showing um, the, the percentage of bids that are won that do not result in an impression. This is for video, right? Um, across a number of different industry parties. Obviously, we can't disclose any names. Uh, but these are like large video SSPs, ad tech companies, like across the board that we've kind of indexed and, and kind of looked at what their numbers are. Um, and this translates immediately to 20 to 50% uh, top line revenue loss from premium publishers. If you're running like premium video, this is direct money you're not gaining because the impressions are not firing. Um, and we've taken a look at why this is happening and why we haven't resolved this issue. Uh, and what we've noticed is that there's a bunch of kind of barriers that people need to cross to get breakage resolved. Um, first of all, and this is almost like the biggest barrier, is many people are not truly aware of the problem itself and uh, what is the root cause of it. And the reason why is that if you're a publisher or an SSP and this is happening to you, um, then the, the proper reporting to investigate, uh, you see an impression breaking, but is it the same reason as this other impression that broke five minutes ago? Uh, you need to do a bunch of correlation, data analysis, uh, reporting to really surface the core issues that you want to spend time on. Especially because um, if a certain campaign creator, for example, let's say it breaks inventory on iOS, uh, if that budget gets spread out across a bunch of different websites, a bunch of different publishers, each one receiving a small fraction of the money, um, imagine how large a problem has to become before you can spend an, a week of engineering time of an expert looking into the problem, trying to identify root cause and trying to fix it. The problem needs to be like a top 10 issue across all of your inventory in order to really kind of bubble up and be looked at. And the second thing is if you then allocate engineering time to try to figure out what went wrong, the next challenge becomes how do you then uh, reproduce the issue? Um, can, you, can you in a reasonable time frame, in like a couple of days, a, a week, can you figure out what is that root cause and can you reproduce it in a, a lab environment? The third is then um, can you actually trace responsibility to a, 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 a correct third party? Because um, there might be four or five different parties involved and when an error gets thrown out of your ad, who actually was causing that error. That's oftentimes totally opaque and important to understand because then you go to the next stage. You need to contact that third party and need to prove to them that they're causing it, uh, which can be a big hurdle to cross. Like they will deny responsibility until you have irrefutable proof that it's them. And then finally, it needs to be embarrassing enough for them to actually do something about it because they might just say, oh, well, look at this a year and a half from now. And then you're back to square one. And and. The reality is that we've kind of accepted that this is normal, like th th this is okay, this is how we work, and, and this is totally unacceptable, we feel. Right? We, it's irresponsible of us not to address this. Um, so we believe there are a couple of things we can do as an industry to fix this, right? Uh, and some of them are obvious, some of them will take a bit more work. First of all, uh, people often like pointing back to the IB specifications themselves and say like, oh, but it's not clear, they're ambiguous. Uh, like I've implemented what I read in the spec uh, and obviously that can become very confusing and it becomes like a yes, no, um, black and white decision. Uh, and we feel that that can definitely be improved, but that's more of a long-term project and we feel like it's more of people hiding behind those facts rather than the true root causes of problems. Um, the second is I think this is a much more achievable early goal is whenever we launch new standards or new specifications that we do provide reference implementations as well. And some of the new working groups have started to already do this. For example, open measurement is a great example. Uh, but I know uh, Ryan and the civic working group are working on this as well uh, to provide real clear like actual code that everyone can look at in the industry as an open source project and see how it's supposed to be implemented. You're still allowed to implement things yourself but at least you have a reference implementation to look at if something isn't clear. Um, the third can be a lot more complex. It's the right incentives because um, you as, like if, if you're on the sell side, 
then this is a huge re- like issue you want to get solved. Uh, it's top line revenue loss. But on the other side, if the buy side doesn't pay for broken impressions, uh, why would they be incentivized to actually help you fix it? Um, so there's definitely something to be done on that front to create the right incentives for the industry that everyone, every single company uh, has the right incentive in place to try to fix as much of the breakage as possible to remove this issue. And it's especially important in premium inventory. Even the buy side has a, an incentive today in the sense that if there's a lack of supply, if you're supply constrained, then uh, solving breakage and freeing up 20 to 50% of impressions, uh, making those available actually is a pretty significant change. Um, and then finally, the last point is just providing better tooling. If, if something breaks, that there is an easy, efficient, uh, facilitated approach to try to figure out what's going on. And, and that's kind of what we want to dive deeper into today. Uh, because as you know, there's a bunch of these uh, testing tools out there, uh, including for VAS, for video ads, and a number of different companies, including uh, Google has one, GW Player has one, like a bunch of different companies provide these tools. But there is no uh, tool that is provided by the IB to the community as an open source project. Uh, if your ad works in one tester but not in the other, uh, it can be difficult to try to figure out like what that causes, uh, why that's happening, and uh, what you should do about it. Uh, so what we're announcing today is that uh, Zendrick, our testing tool, has become uh, a public open source project under the IEB umbrella uh, that you will be able to use as a public tool to take any VAS tag in the world, run it through this testing system, and it will give you a bunch of information about what this ad is doing, why it's doing this, what's going on, how all the different specifications like VAST, VPAID, open measurement all kind of interplay together how they're all kind of collaborating to give you a single user experience and allow give you all of the debugging information you would need as an engineer to try to figure out what's going on. Um, so we're making this open source uh, because we feel that everybody in the industry should be able to contribute back to that. Like, I want to make clear this is not something where we as Centric say, oh, we'll maintain this and we'll, we'll just run it under the IB umbrella. No, we're making this open source so everyone that sees a mistake or sees something that they want to implement or there's a new specification being worked on by one of the working groups, that there is a platform for that to be prototyped on, uh, to be contributed on, and this can evolve into some kind of reference tool that explains to the industry what is the correct way of running a video ad and uh, if it works here, it should work everywhere. That's kind of the the theory that we're trying to aim for. Um, Okay. And of course, yeah, final point is um, obviously this is also not intended to replace the existing testers in the industry. Those definitely have their place and their value. Like it's it's valuable to test if your ad works in Google IMA, for example, like using the Google tester. Uh, But they serve a different purpose. They are showing whether an ad will work within the proprietary system of whoever built the tool. This is trying to create a generic tool that can uh, be used as a reference and as a debugging environment. Um, so we're going to look at, a, at a, an example, at a demo, but what does this tool support today? So feel free for the community to add contributions, but currently it supports VAST uh, ads, it supports VPAID, it supports open measurement, so OMIT for web is included. It's, as far as I'm aware, the first test tool in market that supports open measurement as a demonstration case. Um, and it will do a couple of things for you. It will analyze the VAST tag, like the the content of your VAST file, and will kind of render it for you on the screen so you can see the structure of your VAST ad. It will trace all these VAST, VPAID, OMID, uh, and other lifecycle events so it can kind of tell you what's going on during the playback of the ad. And um, it allows you to inspect the state of all these specifications in real time. So you'll see exactly what state open measurement is in, what it's trying to tell your ad, what is going on, and the same for VPAID and VAST. Uh, It's also cross-browser, so you can run this on mobile devices, you can run this on your desktop, you can run this anywhere, basically. And um, you can, uh, there's an interesting feature where it allows you to download a trace. Like, let's say you tested an ad and it didn't do something correctly. It allows you to download a full trace of everything that happened in that ad experience and send it to someone else. Which means that if someone in uh, a customer or someone in your organization is able to reproduce an issue, they can send you a full trace of that one issue back to an engineer or someone that can kind of investigate it deeper. And we feel that this is something that was missing in existing tooling, that ability to transmit user experiences uh, as a log to someone else. So let's take a look at the demo. Uh, We'll switch over to my screen. There we are. So uh, the UI is pretty simple. 
You basically go to uh, vastester.ibtechlab.com. It's publicly available today. Uh, you can put in a tag, any, any tag basically you want. And there's a bunch of options like to just simulate certain kinds of inventory or certain kinds of environments. Uh, for example, you can kind of simulate muted autoplay and stuff like that. Um, you can simulate preloading if someone would preload your VPAID ad, for example, two seconds in advance to kind of prefetch the assets. Um, you can disable VPAID support, and then there's a bunch of other options for OMID as well. So, for example, to run it in a limited access mode and uh, those kind of things. Uh, so then if you run the test, it basically, this is what it will look like. It will render the ad for you, and then you'll see a full log of all the technical details of every single thing that happened in the video player, everything that happened with vast VPAID, open measurement, and so forth. Uh, and then you'll have a bunch of tabs, one for every specification or one for every component, and you'll see all the events that happened. This kind of gives you a full insight into the uh, structure of the VAST tag and all the parameters inside of it. Um, for VPAID, we have a similar setup where you can see all the VPAID events that were fired, what happened, what didn't happen, and all the state of all the properties of VPAID. Same for the video file uh, that was playing back, and same for open measurement. So it kind of lists all, uh, out all the open measurement scripts that were included and that have been run if they succeeded, if they threw an error, if um, they were able to track anything and all the events that they fired. So giving you a full picture of uh, the ad experience. Um, and then finally, if you click the top right, the eye icon, it gives you kind of uh, this dialogue and then you can click, uh, I have to check where the link is. Oh, I think it's actually this other, this is the share button. Yeah, okay, so it allows you to do download log and will give you a JSON file that includes, um, there we go, well. So it includes like all the traces of events, everything that happened in this single ad experience. Uh, allowing someone external that didn't reproduce it locally to kind of see what was going on. Uh, okay, so that's a quick kind of overview of, uh, of the tool. Uh, can we move back to the slides, please? Uh, and oh yeah, so these were backup uh, with demos. I always have to be careful to have some backup uh, images available. Um, so, what does this mean? What what can you do today, right? So, first of all, um, please try it out. Uh, and if you see any issues, uh, there is an icon in the tool itself to go to the GitHub repository where all the code is hosted, and you can file issues, you can file suggestions, you can file improvements, you can even submit your own code to the project to improve things. Um, so obviously, we're super happy to accept any contributions, and uh, I think the IAB Tech Lab as a, as a whole, not only Zentric, uh, is kind of supportive of that statement. Um, and our goal is to really expand this tool into something that can be uh, much more advanced even still. Uh, for example, we've already talked with the VPDI, the Civic Working Group, to uh, start building support for this uh, into as a prototype into this tool. So you'll have an extra tab saying Civic, and you will be able to simulate your civic prototype or civic ad running in this environment as well and get all the debug information. Um, so we feel that this can accelerate standardization efforts because it gives a kind of a platform for working groups to prototype new capabilities and test them out with real ads in real live environments with real debugging tools against it. That it will allow us to, once we start doing that, for example, let's say civic creates a prototype implementation and they launch the specification, it will then give everyone a reference implementation because now there's a test tool available with public source code that implements Civic and you'll be able to look at it and see how they did it themselves to try to kind of reproduce that in your own environments. And finally, um, we feel that providing debug tooling will help the industry adopt new kind of capabilities faster because rather than building your own tooling internally and everyone's replicating that process, there's now some kind of shared work available for everyone. Uh, there's even more to come, so this was kind of our contribution today, but we feel like debugging tools are great, but automating uh, breakage resolution is even better. So we're working actually on a platform that will, uh, that will do this. Uh, you can sign up for, uh, to hear about those announcements when they come out uh, next quarter, uh, we'll, where we'll be launching a beta program for that. And if you're interested in fixing breakage, come and talk to us. Uh, there's a bunch of resources that you can use, uh, like around so the vast tester itself, the, the code uh, that you can look at open source. There's a bunch of existing um, kind of pages from the IAB, like their tag validator, there are specs available, the XSD, the XML schema that you can look at, there are sample files available, and of course all the specifications themselves for VPAID and open measurement. So those are all valuable resources to take a look at if you're interested in this stuff. 
Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. Um, maybe I should ask if there are any questions. <laughs> um, and we should probably have a microphone then. Oh, there we have someone. Yes. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Um, so I'm not super familiar with the uh, open source, so what's allowed and what's not allowed. It, would this code be viable for a publisher to actually adopt it as the basis of a new player with that issue? So the, the, you could do that. So it is definitely possible, and we want to go for that modular, modularization, that it would actually be possible for someone to kind of just take that civic code, for example, that civic implementation we just talked about, and plug it into their existing player and just, OK, they would have to have their existing player talk to this code. But it would be more kind of, it would be easier and faster implementing your own version of it. And that could actually be a very nice way to move into kind of a next phase where if the industry has reference implementations, unless you have a solid reason to want to implement things yourself, it might actually be easier to just use the reference implementation and know that things are going to work correctly. Um, so that's definitely one of the aspects that we're trying to aim for. But I also have to kind of, um, the footnote there is that the, the main purpose for the implementation today is to provide all this debugging information. So the code itself has a bunch of hooks to hook into every single thing that's happening to provide you with all this debug information on the screen. So uh, someone that wants to use it in production would probably want to strip those kind of debugging things out uh, so that they have more efficient uh, code set up. Yep. Hope that helps. Uh, um, I think you got the biggest applause of the day. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but uh, I'm over here. Yeah. Um, Sorry, yeah, it's behind the pillar. Did, um, does it allow you to see multiple wrappers of embedded VAS within embedded VAS within embedded VAS, and, and how does it go about doing that? Sure. Um, that's a great question, by the way. Um, so the answer is, right now, it will surface the vast, like the, the first layer. But the good news is we've already built tooling internally to do what you're describing, where we basically x-ray the full chain of events, like even through vPaid units to other VAS behind it, to other vPaid, to other VAS, other. So we can basically provide a full x-ray of the whole ad. Uh, and so we can already do that today internally. So our goal is to see how we can help surface that kind of tooling to the industry as well. Uh, yeah. So I saw that it's a secure site. Does it support unsecure creatives? And does it do like audit macro replacement? So a lot of times you get a creative that you have to put a price macro in it. Um, so first, yes, it supports uh, secure or insecure HTTP, HTTPS links. We want to allow you to test both, basically. Uh, so it supports both HTTP and HTTPS, because sometimes ad behave, ads behave differently in both scenarios. Uh, replacing macros, I would have to check. Uh, I don't know by heart if the code actually replaces them, but the intent is that they do. So um, the goal is that this is fully VAS for one compliant, and of course, you're allowed in VAS for one to replace all the macros with like minus one, meaning I don't want to support it. Uh, but obviously, that's a pretty naive implementation. So we we do hope that the the tool itself can improve to the point where it actually provides all of this information and can replicate a true video player. So you have a solid, reliable test environment available. Hey, this looks like a great tool. I'm curious about the future state of, so there's an automated version you're working on. So I was curious, is this something that would hook into a live player and get error information live from your site? Or is this more like a pre-QA where you'd sort of point it at a number, like a, a batch file of creatives? We're not ready to announce it yet. Okay. Uh, but the, the, uh, what, what I can talk about is the overarching objective. The overarching objective is that we want to provide a way for the people that feel the strongest pain right now, which is like premium publishers and SSPs, to have a way to automatically fix breakage without a human being even looking at it. That's, that's our kind of core objective. And that's what we're working to build out. I, just one comment, just as a little bit of background. Um, mm -hmm. In some environments, um, we'll prefetch ads, um, yep. either as they might be intended as backfill or these are cans mm -hmm. out. And there are issues where an ad will not render, but it's not broken. Mm -hmm. So just to let you know, one of our challenges is distinguishing that. Is an ad really broken? Is it, did we try to play it and it errored out? Or mm -hmm. did we fetch it and just never play it? So Sure. Yeah, no, no, I totally understand. Um, 
and, and there is indeed that distinction. I think one of the core questions is um, there needs to be able to, to be proper measurement to establish that that was the reason why it didn't play back. Mm -hmm. Because there are indeed valid reasons to prefetch a tag and then not run it. Like that, like people could even like close the page before the ad ends up loading. Like there's core valid reasons. I think the most important part becomes reporting on what the reason is that something didn't play. And then if it is indeed uh, something that wasn't supposed to happen to help fix that issue. It sounds fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Oh, thank you, Peter. Thank you. Uh, certainly there's a lot of interest in the tool.